the embedder user guide, um, when we created it newly, was actually quite nice. It was relatively detailed. We had written it in LaTeX, and so the problem was to keep the documentation in sync with the uh, changing embedder. And so at some point we decided, um, you know, we should use embedder itself, MPS itself, to write the documentation. And we implemented this documentation language, which we've talked and blocked about before. You can define sections, subsections, then you can have these free text areas, you can use code highlighting, you can um, embed images, you can even directly show the image in the editor, you can um, refer to code, for example, um, let me find a good example, here we embed um, the main function, you know, from this Hello World program, directly here you can, that's something we've created new, you can even directly show the code here through Sasha's query list plugin. Now the question is uh, two things. First of all, how do we present this to the end user? And of course what we've always done is we've generated LaTeX and HTML and we continue to do that. Um, but what you can do now as well is you can change the projection mode to the what we call presentation mode. And now what you can see is you can see the document essentially almost as if it were HTML. You can see the pictures directly, you can have you have nice uh, you know uh, captions. I mean there wasn't any caption specified but if there were then it would be used here. You can refer to these things. Let's scroll, uh, scroll a little bit further down. You can see uh, menu combi or menu entries, you know MPS menu things highlighted in green. You can of course your keyboard, hotkeys, shortcuts, embedded pictures again. You can also see the code examples directly embedded, right? So here is, it talks about this implementation module and here is an empty implementation module. You can still jump to the original one. So you have very nicely integrated code and text. Scrolling further down, you can see more um, examples of code. And here you can see a build configuration. Now, um, this is really nice because this allows you um, to have the thing in a very nicely readable way, but you still have all the functionality that you know from MPS and you can always jump to the original code. You can, you know, press Ctrl F9 and run it, right? So it's almost like you have, you have live, live documentation in some sense. Um, now, here is a specifically interesting thing. Um, as you can see here, I'm describing how you implement the Hello World program. So you start with an empty module, right? And then in that module, you put an empty main function. You, you know, you start with the main function and then once you have the main function, you add a return statement so that uh, the type checks shut up. And then you define a message list in your implementation module and then you add the report statement. Now, as you can see, I'm essentially growing this implementation module from the empty state to the full state with a message list and a main function that prints essentially the world. In the same way down here, here is an empty build configuration, then I talk about the various elements that go into the build configuration. Now, what you don't want is you don't want to have, <clears throat> the, uh, the, you don't have to, you know, have one piece of example code with an empty main function, one piece only with a return and one piece only with a, you know, with a complete one. And so let's go, let's go to the, Let's go to the definition here. You can see here, this is the program. It has the, it is the implementation module, and it has the message list, it has the main function, it has these two statements. By the way, these two statements, we've given them name labels so we can reference them. Because what we do now, so if you go back here and switch to the editing mode, whoops, sorry, I misclicked here, um, then you can see here is your hello world uh, module, right? That's, uh, sorry, that's the function. That's that guy. And then it said, except ret and report. Ret is, of course, this return statement and report is this report statement. So we can essentially take an existing module or existing piece of code, in this case, it's the implementation module, and exclude certain things from their rendering in the tutorial, right? So here we exclude the main function, we exclude the log message, and we exclude all empty lines of code, and so that means you get an empty implementation module. I can, I can change this here, right? I can do this live. I can go here and change that, and you can now see how the log thing shows up. And so this way, you implement 
the example code only once, and then you can still by by by, re by removing things incrementally, you can essentially um, grow uh, your example, explaining step by step what's going on. But you only have to maintain one piece of code, and it's actually executable. So you have you have executable code, but still reference only subsets and 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 sh skeletons or or shallow pieces of the code for documentation purposes. We think this is really useful and this is what we're going to use for updating the user guide. Of course, unfortunately, we still have to rewrite a lot of it. It's still a lot of annoying work, but we've started and uh, we do promise to finish this in in some finite, uh, finite uh, amount of time. Thanks for watching.